One thing's for certain, Nikon is not resting on their laurels, are they? Introducing firmware 3.0 for the Z9. A couple months ago, we had 2.11, which added a lot of features, and now some of those features are coming to video, and also some new features we didn't even think we wanted, but actually they work pretty well. Now, I have been testing this over the past couple days. I have not tried every single feature, but I'll highlight some of the ones that I've tried, and I'm sure a lot of you out there that are going to be into birding and wildlife and sports photography are gonna be able to maximize some of the features that I haven't been able to do just yet. But anyway, let's get on to talking about some of the new benefits of firmware 3.0. First and foremost, let's talk about videographers out there. We got high frequency flicker reduction is now in video. In 2.11, we saw it for photos, and now we're seeing it in video for 3.0. What is it exactly? If you do not know, it's where you can fine tune the shutter speed to reduce that pesky rolling shutter, banding shutter thing, whatever it is, when you get it to LED lights, right? Those little lines that go across your screen, well, guess what? This will alleviate most, if not all of it, and this is a very welcomed addition. I was wondering why they didn't do it for the last one for video as well, but now we're seeing it in 3.0. Next is high res zoom for video and you can do this in 4K, and it's pretty damn awesome. No matter what focal length lens you have, it will go two times your focal length, and it will do it with minimal loss of resolution. Reason being the Z9 is an 8K sensor, it's downsampling from 8K to 4K in the camera. So when you're using this in 4K, ProRes 422HQ, 10-bit MOV, H.265, 10-bit MOV, H.265, 8-bit MOV and H.264 8-bit MP4. You're still maintaining a lot of resolution even up to two times your focal length. I'm gonna show you some samples right here. It works great. You can assign it to function one button or function two button or to the function dial on the back of it. By default, it's to the function dial. I like it there, it's left or right. You can assign it to be fast slow or standard in terms of speed, and it works brilliantly. Autofocus works in it as well. There are some other features in video mode, time code synchronization across multiple Z9s. I don't have multiple Z9s, so I can't really try that. Also, it does sync to the Atomos Sync Blue now via Bluetooth. That is now supported, but if you do use that, it's now supported here in the Z9. Let's talk about photography for a moment because there are some updates for photography. First and foremost, you can now shoot up to 60 frames per second in JPEG. Previously, it was 30 frames and 120 frames in JPEG. JPEG, right? Of course, 20 frames in RAW. Now you can do 60 frames per second in JPEG. However, there is a catch to this. It is only in DX mode, not FX mode. So give you about 19 megapixels per image on that. So if you're a birder, wildlife photographer, sports photographer, you need that extra reach, kind of that APS-C reach, but you still need some resolution. 19 megapixels is more than adequate. Most people survived on that for years with the previous 1DXs in the D series from Nikon, but now it's 60 frames per second in DX crop. So if you're taking all these images, how do you organize them? Well, now there's an auto series playback function. Now, from what I understand, they're saying that you can choose the first image or the last image of the group, and then it'll have the images after that in, this, in succession, so you can actually monitor those and look at them and kind of choose the image that you want. It does seem to be a little bit better organized of course um it'd be nice well i mean obviously that would be ai included the camera could actually detect the best image for you and kind of highlight that that would be kind of cool doesn't do that just yet but it does make it the organization a little bit better that is now included in firmware 3.0 also in terms of photography we now have better 3d tracking now they're saying that uh, they worked on this with lower contrast situations and also foreground and background where the focusing point would just jump to the background for no reason or jump to the foreground they're now trying to alleviate that even more i think a lot of birding photographers wildlife photographers even sports photographers will want to test this and push it to its limits. I have not tried it that much with this. I've just gone around the streets and taken some images and tried tracking and it does seem to stick on a little bit better than previously. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comments what you think has it improved much more than the previous firmware update remains to be seen. Anyway, that pretty much sums up the uh, some of the major benefits of firmware 3.0. I got to hand it to Nikon. They are really being aggressive with the Z9 and I can't wait to see what comes up next because they have made this camera really full featured for what it does. I mean, a lot of these updates would come in a second version of a camera, but Nikon's putting it into the Z9 and they're I don't think they're stopping yet. There's gonna be a lot more coming along the way. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the firmware update. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Like this video, hit that notification bell. More great videos on the way. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.